opportunity. So yeah, so today's topic being mulching uh, and one of the very important aspect of natural farming, as Dr. Prabhakar Rao has already mentioned, and uh, you are here. So how it is important, we will uh, you know understand in a very simpler fashion. Then we will understand the science behind this. Okay. Now uh, you imagine you are in a forest and uh, or even our own ashram way back in 2000. Uh, when I used to visit, you know, Gurudev used to call from uh, wherever he was and used to say, you have not watered a certain pot. So he would tell them to water it. Okay. Now do you think anybody is watering each plant in the ashram? No. No. It, is, it has become self-sustainable. Is it not? How did it become self-sustainable over a period of time? Similarly, a forest any forest for that matter you take, all have become self-sustainable. That's because, you know, the ecology of that forest-like thing has set in, even in our ashram. That's why now Gurudev need not call anybody and say, you didn't water that plant, this plant. Those days we were starting. So that necessity was there. So over a period of time, what would have happened? You can also think and you also know it, that, you know, over a period of time, the leaves fall on the ground they cover the ground and they preserve the water there. Whatever water content is there, they are like a cover. Now imagine you are walking in a very hot, on a hot day in a, in a ground, okay? And you don't find any sign of water at all because it's very hot and in a summer you are walking in a farm. But there may be some stones here and there. And if you upturn the stone, what will you find? A little moisture. Now, now, what the stone was doing? The stone was preserving that moisture. The stone was on the top of that farmland and it was preserving the moisture. Now, this, if you understand, this concept, if you understand, now we can think about our forest or our ashram where the leaves, dry leaves fall and they cover the ground and they protect the moisture. You understand? When the moisture is there, what happens? The temperature outside will be different. The temperature below the dry leaves or whatever is the cover will be different. Now, when the temperature also is low, there is moisture. And for example, no, on a hot summer, I said, normally temperatures range about, about 35. They touch 40. This year, it has touched even 45 and above 45. So when there is a cover on the top of the ground, and the, the, the leaves or the dry leaves, or you may call blasting mulching, or you may call live mulching. I'll tell you all these things later on. But whatever is covering the ground, what does it do? It protects the moisture that is existing there. Okay. And when it protects, what happens? It brings down the temperature. Hmm? When the temperature is low, a little bit below the, than the outside temperature, Moisture is preserved, then a unique microclimate is maintained there. You understand? Now, below this grass covering, the climate there is maintained. Now, what is this microclimate? Now, this microclimate is very conducive, very suitable for the microbes to thrive, for the life in the soil to thrive. Why do you think they need that temperature? It's because anything for that matter, you take your mosquitoes. If it's very hot, you don't find mosquitoes. If it's very cold, you don't find mosquitoes because they cannot survive in that extremes, either very hot or very cold. They want that nice, you know, cozy temperature of between 25 degrees to 32 degrees. So now you come back to this, when there is an extreme weather outside, and there is some covering on the ground and the water is conserved, preserved and the moisture is there and the temperature is also low. Then it is ideal, ideal for the life in the soil to thrive. They are all minute little things, no? They are the centipedes, the millipedes, the scorpions, the frogs, the snails. You see so many things, you just take one handful of soil and see the earthworms. And 
many more things which are not visible to your naked eye will be there. And they are all called the microbes. Microbes means that which is very small, that is not visible to your naked eye. Now these microbes, they thrive. And what do they do? All this life, it helps the plant in giving the, breaking down the nutrients and supplying to the plant. Now we know a little bit about, you must have heard me speaking or any other speaker speaking about the nutrition about the plant and how the plant gets the, the food that it's broken down. Huh? The complex uh, compounds are broken into simpler forms which the plant can absorb. For example, no, if you simply, uh, they give you, they buy gehu and say, okay, you eat. Can we eat? No, that needs to be ground into powder and only you can make chapati. Even raw atta you cannot eat. You have to make it, cook it and eat. Similarly, rice, you cannot simply eat rice. You have to cook it, make it soft. And similarly, the plant also requires its nutrition in a soluble form, in a form that it can uptake or it can absorb. Got the point? Similarly, see our digestion system, if you observe what is happening, we eat the solid food, we chew in our mouth, then it goes down and then so much of activity happens in your stomach, then your small intestine, then it gets digested, then it gets absorbed in the blood. So this whole process is such a complex process. Now, here also, the food just simply don't, doesn't get into your blood vessels. It goes through a process. You understand? Similarly, here also, the plant will get the nutrition fixed by these microbes. So some plants are having in their root nodules, these microbes, all the pulses, all the dicotyledons, they will have the root nodules in which all these microbes will be there. And apart from that, you will have microbes, soil uh, microbes in the gut of the animals. Huh? And like cow has got the maximum. That's why he said cow dung. Otherwise, you can take horse dung, you take elephant dung, any dung, but the number of microbes that are there in the cow gut is more and you get it through the cow dung. So in the cow dung, the microbes are there. Now, how does this mulch the microbes, the plant? All these are interconnected, you should understand. Now, if you maintain, if you put that, you know, like dakkan, it is like a covering on the top of the soil. Then your microclimate is managed. If your microclimate is managed, the life in the soil is preserved. If the life in the soil is preserved, then they fix the nutrition to the plant. This way it works, you know, it's such a complex way, but beautiful way. Okay. Microbes give food to the plant. The plant gives food to the microbes. They live in very symbiotic relationship. That's what they call it as a symbiotic relationship. That beautiful, no? That synergy between the two. That's how it happens. Now, mulching, how this is one aspect of mulching. Now, there are many other aspects which you need to do. So, one is how do you mulch? Now, what you see, many people, you know, they put all plastic covering and mulch. No. When you do natural farming, you do everything natural, right? And natural means what? The waste, agro waste, all your farm waste. What is your farm waste? It could be the dry leaves, the dry twigs, the coconut husk, you know, all these, the leaves, the big banana leaves, the trunk, everything is a farm waste for you. Now, what can be used as a mulch effectively is all your dry leaves, twigs and husk can be used effectively as a mulch to cover the topsoil. So when you cover the topsoil, what happens? One is what I explained that happens. Second thing is the topsoil is usually affected by the five elements. That is, the, uh, when there is a big blow of uh, air is blowing, it will carry away all the nutrition and go. You know, you, so you see, you know, a gale of wind, what will happen? It will carry some, you can see the particles, mud particles going away with that wind. Have you seen? So when there is a big uh, gale of wind, it will carry away the top side. Similarly, if there is a heavy rain, what happens? What gets washed up? The topsoil gets washed up. So all the nutrition that is there in the topsoil gets washed up. Now third, if there is a very scorching sun, now do you think the topsoil gets affected or the subsoil? It's always the topsoil. 
So this top soil, that is soil from the, to the top, two, three feet is called top soil and below that is subsoil. Now this gets completely, you know, leached of the nutrients. Every time it gets leached of the nutrients, what is left for the plant? So your mulching will help. Now mulching, you are protecting the top soil from the, the elements that are normally acting on the top soil. This you should understand. And then going forward, the top soil can be covered by dry mulch or it can be a live cover. Live cover means what? Now there are some plants like Glyricidia and velvet uh, beans. All these, they have the ability to spread wide, you know, they grow horizontally to the ground and they cover the ground. When they cover the ground naturally, what do, what do they do? When the plant is there, what does the plant do? It holds on. It holds the water there. Okay, runoff will not be there. Runoff means just where it rains, it just doesn't just get washed away. Runoff will not be there. Similarly, when there is a gale of wind, you can't, you won't see when the plants are there, you won't see all the mud being carried away. It's not like a plain ground, you understand? So again, the, this whole song. So in so many ways, this plant is protecting the topsoil. So this topsoil leaching does not happen. You understand, no? So the nutrition is preserved in that thing. And third thing is, there is one uh, another mulch called the soil mulch. Soil mulch is what you do in the beginning, no? When you prepare the land, you till the land, you upturn the soil, then you it is called solarization. You expose it to the sunlight. And when you expose to the sunlight, what happens? All the pathogens, the viruses, the bacteria, which is not required, which may harm the plant, they will all get exposed to the sunlight and they will die. Okay. So that's one way of doing. Second thing is your weeds will go. Third thing is you are making the soil more loose, more porous. When more it becomes more porous, what happens? Lot of air will circulate, which is also necessary for the plant. Air will circulate and water will percolate. So you are making the soil, enabling the soil to be to maintain the porosity so that all this happens. So if there is a heavy rain, say now, now have you seen the news? The entire India, it is getting almost, the clouds are all over India. Heavy rains are there. Now what happens, even heavy rains is a problem for farmers. You know, they are not very happy because the standing water will rot all their crops and now they are beginning, so they will wash away. So if you make your soil porous, then what happens? The water percolates. So all these things are necessary, soil mulching, live mulching, huh? and straw mulching. Straw is nothing but the dry mulch, what I was talking about. Now we should understand what happens when you mulch. What is the science behind this mulching? Now what we do is we are covering the top soil with the dry mulch. And over a period of time, if you have jivam with you, just sprinkle on the mulch and leave it. And then what happens? After some time, you will not see the mulch. It will disintegrate, disintegrate, and it will uh, become one with the soil. That is, it becomes the manure-like thing. It decomposes. Eh? It, it disintegrates. So what happens when it disintegrates? What is, what is happening? For example, when you throw one dry wood sometimes, somewhere, what happens after some time, you see? Nothing will be there. You will see only the covering. And inside, everything would have been eaten away. What eats away? All the termites eat away. Those are small little things. They eat away them. So now what happens when you mulch? I'll just show you that. Just share the screen. So we were talking about soil mulch, live mulch, and the straw mulch. Okay. So now straw mulching, when we do, that is with the dry mulching, like this, when we do, over a period of time, it disintegrates. Over a period of time means if you sprinkle jiva amrit on this, then in very soon the action happens. Why? What happens in jiva amrit? What are you doing? With jiva amrit, what are you doing? You're sprinkling actually the microbes. And these microbes, what do they do? They break down. They break down the uh, dry mulch and then it decomposes. Now when, what happens when it decomposes? or breaks down. So when it breaks down, see like this, it happens. Two things come out of this. I'm, I'm not able to, one minute. Huh. 
Now on uh, breaking down, what is breaking down you see? The soft part in a dry mulch, what happens? The soft part is gone. That is the water content is already gone. That is H2O is gone. Now what is left there is the dry part. The dry part is made up of two things. One is the lignin and the cellulose. And these are the hard part, okay? The, which is fiber-like, you know? And this lignin is what is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Have you seen this? Now, and the plant, what does it require? It requires 98.5% these three only for its growth, for its survival, everything. So like how, see, when we eat, what do we do? We, we take a lot of chapatis or rice. And then we take proportionately dal and vegetables. We don't take a lot of vegetables and a little piece, a small piece of bread or a chapati. Or we don't take so much of sambar and take little rice. It doesn't happen because your body will not accept it. So similarly, a plant also wants more of carbohydrate. What is carbohydrate? It is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen combination only is carbohydrates. The formula you see, it will have C and H and O only in different, different proportions. Okay. So this lignin, that is the fiber, is again made up of these three things, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And the other portion, that is, of the dry part, is the cellulose. What is cellulose? You know, every cell, every cell, Wall is made up of what? When we were small children, we learned no, in biology. Cell wall is made up of cellulose. We already learned it when we were in school. So that cellulose is again, what is it? It is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Now what, I, what have you done? By doing this mulching, you are, you are giving what the plant wants in a major proportion. The plant wants only this. And nobody will tell you all this, you know, they will sell NPK. Everything is fine, but the plant does not want that 98.5%. That it wants only this 98.5%. And the other things it wants is in small, minuscule proportion only. Exactly the way our body wants. Why we need carbohydrates? Because that immediately transforms into energy and we are able to, I am able to speak, you are able to sit and listen to me, you are able to do so many things from morning till night, we go on doing things. How do we do? It's because we, that shakti, na, that energy. And how does it come from? Where does it come from? Mostly you get it from carbohydrates. So carbohydrates is a major requirement for a plant body or animal body or human body. And when you do mulching, you are giving maximum these three things to the plant. So that is why this mulch has got so much of significance in uh, this thing. So now we'll just have a look once again into all the advantages of mulching and then we can go for questions if you want. One is if you mulch, you are protecting the topsoil, you are avoiding the evaporation of water. Then as I said, you, are, you will maintain the microclimate there where the temperature is maintained between 25 to 32 degrees and humidity is maintained to 60 to 75 percent. And soil texture improves because you make the soil so well, the texture improves, it becomes so soft and porous that, and then mulch creates what? It creates lingoproteins which helps to develop the white rootlet. And that those are the things which absorb the nutrients. Now what happens is, um, when the, uh, this mulching happens, you see, we have a tap root huh, that goes down. And we have small roots, the auxiliary roots. And then these roots, small roots, which go away from the plant, those are the ones which will go in search of water and nutrition. And the tap root is, it just goes down. It's like your foundation of the building. Huh? How the building foundation goes down, so the building stands there. Okay. So tap root is similar to like that only. And then all the other roots coming out of this tap root, they go in search of water and nutrition. So by doing this, you are, you know, the lingoproteins are secreted and then these white roots, they, they go, uh, they develop and they go in search of. The more they go, no, the wider they go, the far away they go, so much of a spread will be there. Then what happens? Then the 
solid your plant will become more sturdy and healthy and robust this is how the whole thing works okay so so this is the thing and then one more thing very beautiful thing happens is the earthworms they come up huh? because you are making very ideal no like you in a hot summer you come and put your ac you feel so nice just like that you are providing that kind of a <laughs> atmosphere environment for the life in the soil so the earthworms all come and then they help the farmer earthworm is who is a farmer's friend and then photosynthesis it increases photosynthesis okay and the cn ratio this is very important in mulching that the cn ratio improves what is that cn ratio is carbon to nitrogen ratio and all the dry matter will supply the carbon as we have seen no lignin and cellulose they are nothing but carbon and h hydrogen what oxygen hydrogen and oxygen is water and carbon is the organic carbon that gets supplied to the to the farm that to the soil right so this cn ratio is maintained this is very important when we do the soil test it should be uh, a good healthy car organic carbon but unfortunately we don't even have one one is to six also we don't have that is one carbon also we are not having right now you do test anywhere in india it is coming very badly you know 0.33% will be the carbon content no not like that nitrogen is there in the air 78% of the atmospheric air is made up of nitrogen only but carbon which is very very important for the plant growth is coming it has fallen below 0.33% so this mulching will help the straw mulching will help to increase this organic carbon and then you are making it very convenient for all the microbes fungus actinomyces all these you know to grow and thrive there when you do all these things then the phyto hormones like auxins and endolic acid endol acetic acid are all generated in which case you don't have to buy it from outside have you got the point otherwise ye hormone dalo hormone somebody will go on you know making money at your cost so do mulching so many beautiful things happen got the point and it also creates antibiotics which will destroy the pathogens i was telling no solarization when you upturn the soil and expose it to the sun what happens you are killing the pathogens there so when you do mulching also antibiotic is released by in this process of disintegration decomposition and then pathogens get killed so like this you are helping for the soil uh, preventing the soil erosion you are conserving the water your ground water level in will increase and even in the afternoon we had we had a lecture where no not only me but there was another speaker who said uh, in 20, with 20% water we can do natural farming there is if you need 100 liters with chemicals in natural way you do only with 20 liters of water so like this this mulching helps in a beautiful way i hope you understood huh so i stop the sharing and we can have questions if you want yes rahul yes uma ji <laughs> so if anyone has any questions they can put on chat or you can also unmute yourself and ask just don't like create chaos one by one you can unmute yourself and you can ask Also, Umaji, someone is requesting. Can you please tell the advantages in Hindi also? Thickness of mulching, madam. बहुत अच्छा आपने explain किया. कोई कोई बात कर रहा है. Thickness of thickness of mulching कितनी होनी चाहिए? Thickness आप देखिए ज़्यादा नहीं. आपके ground cover होना चाहिए. है ना? At least ना one acre के लिए हमको एक एक truck load चाहिए हमको. Straw. अगर आप स्ट्रॉ की बात कर रहे हैं तो एक ट्रक लोड एक एकर के लिए चाहिए आई डोंट नो इफ दैट विल सेटिस्फाई यू सर उसको भूमि पर स्प्रेड करने से कितना होगा उतना तक काफी है सिर्फ देखिए क्या दो, दो, क्या क्या दो से तीन इंच काफी रहेगा बहुत हो गया क्योंकि हाँ मोर देन इनफ मोर देन इनफ ठीक है मुझे समवन वाज आस्किंग इफ 
यू कैन एक्सप्लेन दी एडवांटेजेस इन हिंदी आल्सो हिंदी में हां वी विल गो इन हिंदी आल्सो यस ओके तो आपको कहां तक समझ में आया वो बताने से देन आई कैन स्टार्ट फ्रॉम देयर इंस्टेड ऑफ ऑल वे थ्रू हां मल्चिंग तो आपको समझ में आ गया ना मल्चिंग तीन तरह के होते हैं एक तो सॉइल मल्चिंग कहा जाता है जिस जो फ्रीजन के प्रारंभ में ही किया जाता ना सब थोड़ा बहुत टिलिंग करते हैं ताकि वो सूरज के किरणों के को एक्सपोज हो जाए आपकी भूमि तो उसमें जितने भी पैथोजेंस है वो सब एक्सपोज होने से पैथोजेंस मर जाएंगे और इसके अलावा सॉइल लूज हो जाएगा लूज होने के कारण क्या होता पानी नीचे उतरने में आसानी से उतरेगा और हवा का बहना भी अच्छी तरह से होगी देन द प्लांट ग्रोथ तब क्या होगा वो ग्रोथ ऑफ द प्लांट बहुत अच्छी तरह से होगी इसलिए सॉइल मल्चिंग ये तो बिगिनिंग ऑफ दी सीजन में सब लोग करते हैं खास करके यहाँ पर जहाँ पानी नहीं है वो लोग बहुत अच्छी तरह से ये करते क्योंकि ना उनके लिए एक एक बूंद पकड़ के रखना है इसलिए हाँ समझे ना तो यू आर मेकिंग द सॉइल फोर सेकेंड है लाइव मल्चिंग लाइव मल्चिंग माने ऐसे ही ना जैसे ग्लाइरीसीडिया हो गया या आपके वेलवेट बीन्स हो गए जो आप मेन uh, क्रॉप है आप ऐसे समझ लीजिए ऑर्चिड्स है जैसे मैंगो uh, ऑर्चिड या गोवा ऑर्चिड है तो दो प्लांट के बीच में जो जगह है वो सब ना ग्राउंड को कवर कर देना ऐसे uh, भूमि पर स्प्रेड होने वाले जैसे वेलवेट बीन्स वगैरह जो हॉरिजॉन स्प्रेड होते हैं जैसे पैरल टू द ग्राउंड ऐसे करने से क्या होता है भूमि का भूमि को प्रोटेक्ट करके रख रहा है जैसे मल्चिंग माने आपको समझ में आ गया ना डकन के तरह ना एक डकना है तो ये लाइव मल्चिंग के द्वारा भी आप कर सकते हैं उसको कवर क्रॉप कहते ठीक है ना तो इसके अलावा जितना भी फार्म बेस्ट है अभी हमारा प्रॉब्लम क्या है हरियाणा पंजाब फार्म फार्मर्स के साथ यही तो हो रहा है ना उनके लिए समय काफी नहीं है पैड़ी कट करते हैं हार्वेस्ट करते हैं और वीट बोने के बीच में जो जगह टाइम है वो बहुत बहुत ही कम है इसलिए वो क्या करते वो बंद कर देते बट हमारे कुछ पंजाब फार्मर्स ऐसे सक्सेस स्टोरी भी है हमारे पास जो इसको मल्च करके प्रोडक्शन प्रोडक्शन इंक्रीज कर दे तो ये मल्च माने क्या मल्च माने जो कटा हुआ जो वेस्ट है फार्म वेस्ट है जो स्ट्रॉ हो सकता है या आपके सूखे पत्ते या डंडी ऐसे ना कोकोनट के हक ऐसे सारे को लेके फिर से एक बार ना डकना है डकना माने अपने टॉप सॉइल को डकना टॉप सॉइल माने क्या सॉइल जो ऊपर से तीन फीट तक जो रहता है उसको टॉप सॉइल सॉइल कहते हैं उसके नीचे जो है उसको सब सॉइल कहते हैं तो खास करके क्या होता है टॉप सॉइल कभी वो डिप्लीशन में ही रहता उसमें ज्यादा न्यूट्रिशन आप एक्सपेक्ट नहीं करना क्योंकि सब सॉइल जो है वो इंटैक्ट रहता है ना कोई उसको डिस्टर्ब कर पाता इसलिए उसमें जितने न्यूट्रिशियन रहता है ना वो सब अच्छी तरह से सुरक्षित है लेकिन ऊपर का जो सॉइल है वहां पर क्या होता बड़ा बारिश हो गई वह तो बह के चले जाना या अकाल हो गया तो ऐसे ना भूमि क्रैक हो जाना या बहुत हवा है तो हवा के साथ तो भूमि को भी ना मैंने मिट्टी को लेके चले जाना जिससे आपका न्यूट्रिशन कम हो जाता है टॉप सॉइल का तो अगर आप डक दी डक ना माने लाइव मल्चिंग हो सकता है या ड्राई मल्चिंग हो सकता है ऐसे ना ड्राई को स्ट्रॉ मल्चिंग कहते हैं डक दिए तो क्या होता है ये तीनों प्रकार में से जो टॉप सॉइल पर आ, क्या कहते हैं इफेक्ट होता है ना वो बचा सकते हैं आप टॉप सॉइल को तो इस तरह करने से क्या होता है डकने से फर्स्ट आप बाहरी टेम्परेचर से यहाँ कवर के नीचे जो है वो टेम्परेचर में डिफरेंस रहेगा ही रहेगा हंड्रेड परसेंट वो तो आप मानोगे ना तो बाहर आप समझो फोर्टी डिग्री से अगर आप डक दिए तो ये स्ट्रॉ या जो भी डक ये है ऊपर उसके नीचे जो है वो टेम्परेचर थ्री टू फाइव डिग्री कम हो जाता है और टेम्परेचर कम होना और वहां पर नमी जो है उसको पर, उसको प्रिजर्व करके रखना यही तो ये डक्कन काम करता है माने आपका मल्च कम करता है तो ये प्रिजर्व होने के कारण ये नमी और टेम्परेचर डाउन होने के कारण वो भूमि में जितना भी लाइफ है माने आपके केचुए हो सकते जो छोटे छोटे है ना आप देख सकते जो आंखों में आंखों से दिख सकता वो सब प्रिजर्व होके लाइफ वहां रहेगा इसके अलावा जो आप आंखों से अपने ह्यूमन आई से दे, नहीं देख सकते माइक्रोव्स है जीवाणु है 
वो सब भी बच के वहां पर सुरक्षित रहेंगे इससे क्या लाभ है इससे लाभ है पहला लाभ है आप सॉइल माइक्रोब्स रहने से ये पौधे के लिए जो पौष्टिक आहार चाहिए जो भूमि में है हवा में है हवा में माने नाइट्रोजन हवा में है और भूमि में खास करके साल सारे घन रूप में जो पौष्टिक पदार्थ है न्यूट्रिय है उसको ब्रेक डाउन करके माने उसको तोड़ के एकदम सोल्यूबल फॉर्म में जिससे साइंस में कहते हैं ना किलेटेड फॉर्म उस रूप में बदल कर ये पौधे को सप्लाई करता है कौन ये माइक्रो और पौधा उसको एक यूनिट शुगर दे देता तो इस प्रकार का एक संबंध बना हुआ है नेचर में वो आप उसको जारी रखोगे अगर आप डक दिए समझे ना एक माइक्रो क्लाइमेट मैनेज हो गया दूसरा आपके बायोडाइवर्सिटी इन द सॉइल माने जो भी लाइफ है वो बचा लिए तीसरा आपका माइक्रो काम करने लग जाएगा हुँ? और चौथा क्या है सब काम करने से आपका प्लांट अच्छी तरह से उसका ग्रोथ हो जाता है हाँ और इसके अलावा जो ये जब डीकम्पोज होता है माने ये क्या बोलते हैं ड्राई जो लीव्स आप सब डक के रखे और वो कुछ दिन के लिए रहता है उसके बाद क्या होता है वो डीकम्पोज होके मैन्योर बन जाता माने भूमि में घुल जाता ना तो वो ब्रेक डाउन जब होता तो दो प्रकार के पदार्थ निकलते एक है लेग्मिन एक दूसरा है सेल्यूलोस लेग्मिन सेल्यूलोस कुछ नहीं है वो ड्राई जो फाइबर जैसा रहता है ना जो ड्राई अपने मल्च का वो टूटने से माने डिसइंटीग्रेट होने से ये दो बाहर निकलते इसमें जो है केवल कार्बन हाइड्रोजन और ऑक्सीजन से ही बना हुआ है तो हाइड्रोजन ऑक्सीजन क्या हुआ पानी और कार्बन जो है ऑर्गेनिक कार्बन ये ऑर्गेनिक कार्बन अभी सॉइल टेस्ट आप कर लो आपके फार्म का देखिए कितना कम है तो ये पॉइंट थ्री थ्री परसेंट पॉइंट पॉइंट थ्री फाइव परसेंट इस प्रकार ही है बहुत सारे माने मैं बहुत देखी हूँ उत्तराखंड से लेके अपने आंध्रा तक तो इट्स वेरी लो इसको अगर आप इंक्रीज कर सके ये मल्चिंग वल्चिंग करके तब क्या होगा ऑर्गेनिक कार्बन बढ़ने से ऑटोमेटिकली प्रोडक्शन बढ़ता है अभी मैं और एक मैं एग्जाम्पल देती हूँ आंध्रा में क्या हुआ था जब हम लोग 2016 में हमारे प्रोजेक्ट के लिए जा रहे थे तो बहुत सारे लोग ना हार्वेस्टिंग के बाद जो चूट रह जाता ना डबल जैसे ना भूमि में उसके ऊपर वो रोटा वेटा चलाते थे और रोटा वेटा चलाने से क्या होता वो जो ड्राई स्टबल है वो भूमि में चला जाता था फिर ये लोग लैंड प्रिपरेशन वगैरह वगैरह करते थे फिर उसके बाद जब वो लोग शुरू करते थे तो तब तक ना वो आधा डीकम्पोज हुआ होता डीकम्पोजिशन के कारण क्या होता ये फार्मर्स को भी पता नहीं ट्वेंटी परसेंट यील्ड इंक्रीज हुआ होता समझे ना अभी हमारा सेम यही हाल है पंजाब फार्मर्स के साथ पंजाब फार्मर्स हमारे एक हैंडफुल फार्मर्स जो ये लाइव डेमोन्स्ट्रेट करे ये लोग मल्चिंग का उनका भी यील्ड ट्वेंटी परसेंट इंक्रीज हुआ मरे ये क्या हो रहा कैसे इंक्रीज हो रहा माने वो साइंस यही है कि ये लेग्मिन और सेल्यूलोस जो ड्राई मल्च के कारण वो डिसइंटीग्रेट हो, होते होते कार्बन हाइड्रोजन ऑक्सीजन सप्लाई करता है भूमि में इसके कारण आपको प्लांट ग्रोथ बहुत अच्छी तरह से हो जाता क्यों होता क्योंकि प्लांट के लिए यही मैक्रो मैक्रो क्या न्यूट्रिय के रूप में चाहिए मेजोरिटी उसका रिक्वायरमेंट यही है क्या है कार्बन हाइड्रोजन और इसी प्रकार कुछ ऐसे एंटीबायोटिक्स भी डिसइंटीग्रेट होते होते जब ए, होता है ना ये सारे वट ना क्या बोलते प्रोसेस है जो मल्च एकदम मेन्योर बनने के प्रोसेस में जब क्या होता है कुछ एंटीबायोटिक्स भी निकलते इसके कारण भूमि में अगर कुछ पैथोजन है फिर भी इतना सब आप देखभाल करने के बावजूद अगर हो तो उसको भी मार डालता है इसी प्रकार लिंगो प्रोटीन भी आ, निकलते हैं माने प्रोड्यूस होते हैं जिसके कारण ये पौधों का जो रूट्स है जो रूटलेट्स कहते हैं माने जो न्यूट्रिशन और पानी को चूसता है मेन वही है वो उसका डेवलपमेंट ठीक से होता वो डेवलप होने के कारण क्या होता ज्यादा न्यूट्रिशन ज्यादा पानी वो ले सकता तो ऑटोमेटिक आपका पौधा स्ट्रॉन्ग और रोबस्ट ग्रोथ होने का संभावना है समझ रहे ना इस प्रकार बहुत माने इस प्रकार बहुत सारे ऐसे एग्जांपल्स दे सकते हम लेकिन और कुछ हार्मोन्स भी प्रोड्यूस हो जाते जिसके कारण आप बाजार से कुछ हार्मोन खरीद के प्लांट को देने की कोई जरूरत नहीं जैसे फैटो हार्मोन्स कहते हैं जैसे लाइक ऑक्सीन एंडोलेस्टिक एसिड ये सब भी जनरेट हो जाता है ये मल्चिंग के कारण ठीक है ना और 
खास करके आप मल्च करने से क्या कर रहे हो टॉप सॉइल को बचा रहे हो और ग्राउंड वाटर टेबल को आप बढ़ा रहे हो दिस इज द मेन इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग ऑफ मल्चिंग जब यू नो वन ऑफ द बेस्ट प्रैक्टिस ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर बात करते हैं तो पानी के बारे में बहुत बोलना पड़ता है उसमें क्या है जुडिशियस यूज ऑफ वाटर माने बहुत खर्च करते समय सोच समझ के करना है क्योंकि एग्रीकल्चर एक ऐसा एक्टिविटी है जो पानी बहुत चाहिए आपको आप सारे इंडस्ट्री को एक साइड रखो और एग्रीकल्चर को एक साइड रखना आप कंपैरिजन में देखिए तो एग्रीकल्चर के लिए पानी बहुत अधिक मात्रा में चाहिए और एक वो ऐसा एक नेचुरल रिसोर्स है जो हम क्रिएट नहीं कर सकते जो भी भगवान की कृपा से बरसता है उसको प्रिजर्व करके हमको चलाना है अपना काम ठीक है ना इसलिए हम लोग क्या करते हैं जहाँ पानी ज्यादा बारिश नहीं होती जैसे यहाँ हो गया हमारे आंध्रा के साइड हो गया राजस्थान हो गया गुजरात का वेस्टर्न सौराष्ट्र वगैरह वगैरह जहाँ ना देर देर इज नो वाटर फार्म पॉन्ड स्प्रिंकलर्स ऐसे ना जुड़ी क्षेत्र में एकदम खर्चा कम कर देना पड़ता पानी का तो वन ऑफ द बेस्ट वेज इज ए स्विच ओवर टू नेचुरल फार्मिंग बी डू मल्च यू डोंट हैव टू डू एनी ये करने से ऑटोमेटिक आपका पानी का खर्चा 20 परसेंट में ही हो जाता माने जो 100 परसेंट आप खर्च करते थे अभी केवल 20 परसेंट में आप काम चला सकते हो इस प्रकार मल्चिंग का इतना इम्पोर्टेंस है समझे ना अभी हाँ आई क्लियर यस यस ओके थैंक यू सो उमा जी वी हैव फ्यू क्वेश्चंस ऑन चैट्स कैन यू टेक हेलो यस प्लीज यस uh uh myself is heman kumar dumre here madam uh i am the master trainer for uh, central b research and training institute pune okay yes sir yes and uh, i did one experiment regarding honey bees and mulchi okay yes, so just wanted to share with you yes as the mulchi is there i have merged the different uh, area of uh, plants in my area uh, in my field and yes. then i put the uh, bees there Yes. so i found that uh, a better uh, portion of uh, bringing the water for them is yes. a good way uh, if i do the mulch direct instead of uh, uh, giving the water directly to field if i give the water to um, to a field where mulching is done there huh. the conservation of these honey bees are in more condition oh okay. excellent sir this is a very good news yeah and uh, one thing this is one thing because they can uh, easily take the water from the mulching uh, mulching portion where uh-huh. there is a soil this thing they, they, they just wanted to uh, take that moisture okay directly bees don't go directly to and bring the water so this is uh-huh. what uh, i found one thing and uh, so i wanted to just share with you okay thank you so much very nice uh, uh, i am the master trainer for all the uh a participant here i'm the master trainer for bees and if you wanted to do any bee keeping and something like that on the your terrace also or in the field also my number is i am keeping in the chat box you can take my number and contact sure. me sure sir thank you so much okay yeah someone wants to ask someone is raising hands you can unmute yourself and ask if you have any questions or we can take questions from the chat box ओके समन इज आस्किंग उमा जी कैन यू सजेस्ट सम हैवी ड्यूटी वुड चिपर एंड मल्चर मशीन ब्रांड्स पार्डन मी सम मल्चर मशीन ब्रांड्स इन इंडिया ओ यू वांट टू दैट नॉट नेसेसरी यू नो डोंट गो फॉर सच अ कॉस्टली थिंग व्हाट यू यूज फॉर यू नो फॉर योर एनिमल फीड यू यूज नो व्हिच विल श्रेड इनटू स्मॉल पीसेस दैट्स मोर देन इनफ दैट्स नॉट अ कॉस्टली थिंग एज वी हैव इन आवर गोशाला नो राहुल Yeah. Where it breaks down, you know, into smaller pieces. And if it is dry straw, you don't have to do anything. Just spread the straw because that's a thin straw, and it decomposes very easily. You don't have to break it unless it is a very thick one, which you need to cut it. Then only you get into this. Don't invest like that. Okay. And the question is, when we have to repeat mulching again after we do the first round? Uh-huh. See, normally, no, it takes forty-five uh, days to two months for the whole mulch to disappear into the soil, depending on the activity of the microbes. If the microbial activity is uh, good, then very quickly, you know, in forty-five days, you will not find the mulch at all. Then you repeat the mulch. 
But see, when you have uh, somebody is asking one question about it, can we mulch in winter and in rainy season? See, first you do one thing when you are preparing the soil. That time you mulch it. After you, you know, after on the soil you do all the, you know, you spread the ganachi vamrit and if we are doing natural farming, then you put the mulch. Once you put, and then after that. When you put the seed, let the uh, sprout come out. Don't you know block the? <laughs> some people you know blindly will do like that. See, don't block the growth of the seedling. Let the seedling come out because when you do seed treatment itself for thirty days, nothing will happen. The seed will grow beautifully. Uh, it will sprout and become a seedling. Let it come and become ten centimeters or twelve centimeters, which you can see above the ground. That time you you start mulching. It's fine. And when it is raining heavily, uh, you don't mulch that time. Okay, let the rain and let the water percolate and go away. Hmm? So then you you see sometimes you have to use your discretion. Okay, yes. Uh, another question is: Can we? Yeah, yeah. Is anyone asking a question? Okay. Someone is asking, can we use dust from wood as a mulch around plant? Which dust? Wooden dust. Saw dust, no? Yeah. Uh, now you tell me, uh, how long will the saw dust take to decompose? Tell me now. You only must tell. How long will it take for it to decompose? You, if you want. the mulch to decompose quickly use material which will decompose quickly you know sometimes uh, wood chips and saw dust they'll never disintegrate only mm. they will remain there for a long period of time though they are biodegradable ones but some of them will disintegrate slowly so it is ideal to mulch with straw with dry leaves all this Okay. Another question we have, Uma Ji, is yeah. you said during the session that there is very little carbon, but we are seeing so much of carbon output from industrial gases. Then how is there less carbon than required quantity? Yeah, you must plant more trees to absorb that carbon into the ground. Carbon sequestration should happen. That is in the air, the carbon dioxide. But organic carbon is something which is there in the soil. Okay, so that is why you know now people have become very conscious. Such industries they spend huge amount of money to plant lot of trees so that the carbon sequestration happens. You understand now? Huh? What I'm telling? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Then another question uh, is: Can small pebbles be used in pots for mulching? <laughs> the pebbles you use at the bottom of the pot so that the sand the mud you know the uh, your soil does not block the uh, holes in your pot for that you use but use something once again i'm telling you if you want the growth to happen if you just want to cover it if you put your pebbles it's not going to help you now what we have seen in this uh, presentation we have seen that it covers the top soil and also it disintegrates over a period of time then it becomes a manure like for it and then it releases some uh, phyto hormones it releases uh, some antibiotics which will fight with the pathogens now you tell me will all this happen with the pebbles ha huh? now you decide yeah Next question is: What stage should we mulch after the seed germinates and grows into strong sapling, or can we dig the soil for airing after mulching? Yeah, as I showed you now, uh, let me show you once more. See the growth of this one, so that you will, uh, you know, visual visual effect is more than telling. One minute, you know. have you seen this huh so it should rise up as i said 10 to 12 cm height otherwise it will go if you mulch it how will it uh, survive we should see that it grows into a little bit 
10 to 15 centimeters height and then you start munching. Yeah. Anything else? Last question, Umaji, on the chat box. Can we use green grass as mulch, which we use to feed cows? The long grass. Ah. Mulches, they are live mulch. You can use it where uh, you know topsoil is exposed. And then use it for your animal feed. Grow it and use it for your animal feed. This, uh, our Indian grass has got a lot of good properties, apart from the Bermuda grass. That is, the, the Gruva grass, it has got its own properties and our Indian grass has got its very beautiful properties. So you can use it as a uh, live mulch, which will grow and then you cut it and use it for your farm, uh, for your animals. It will serve two purposes. One yeah. more question, Umaji. Sure. Uh, we use rice husk to mulch. It takes about three months to decompose. Is uh, this correct? That's right. Rice husk is a little hard one. Huh? Hard uh, husk is little hard. It takes a lot of time for it to decompose. But to this, what you do, um, sir, you sprinkle a little bit more of jivamratam on that husk so that the microbial activity you increase. And then the mulching will happen. I mean, the disintegration, decomposition will happen quickly. You have to add that. Huh. Yeah. That's okay. it, Umaji. The okay. questions have ended. Okay. I thank, you, it... thank you so much for taking your time out. Thank you. Thank you. I think everyone would have been benefited from this and we are so glad that you took this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Umaji. Thank you, Rahul. Bye. Bye, all of bye. you. Jai Most of you have put your videos off. I can't see, but bye. <laughs> Shall I end the meeting? Yes, yes, Umaji. Yeah. Somebody is coming now.